Hey, okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> always, uh, always good to be live here. And thanks, thanks for joining in this Sunday with me uh, here, um, KNF uh, office hours. And so, wanted to start this Sunday here with a reading from the I Ching. So, today's message is peace. And it says that heaven exists on earth for those who maintain correct thoughts and actions. This hexagram signifies a time similar to spring. There's a strong flow of energy and harmony and prosperity. Are the <laughs> and harmony and prosperity are the rewards of those who correctly balance their higher and lower natures. It is by remaining aware of our inferior self while ensuring the superior self governs our conduct that we rely or we arrive in a state of peace. See yourself as a young tree now. The ground around you is fertile. Sun and water and wind are plentiful. By maintaining your focus on moving upward toward light, clarity, and purity, you can reach great heights. If you become entangled in inferior things, you will not enjoy the full benefit of this gracious hour. Stay balanced, innocent, and correct, and good fortune is assured. Oh, I, I like that one. That one's, uh, to me, so, so related to natural farming. So often, um, we get tied up in all the things we're trying to do for the plant by balancing this nutrient or that nutrient, um, you know, trying to just do so much. Hey, Tyler, how's it? Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, man. And um, I, I think that when, you know, you go listen to Master Cho and he starts his lecture on natural farming, he doesn't just immediately dive into the solutions. He's not just like immediately like, hey, here's, um, you know, here's, here's, you know, acronyms start throw them at you. Uh, he starts by talking about wind, um, water, and what was the other one? Wind, water, and soil, but it's not, it's, um, sun yeah sun water and wind are plentiful right so the last thing we think about is the soil or most often when we do natural farming we think about the soil but oftentimes he's talking about you know does your plant have access to good sun uh does it have airflow you know same same with our pigs is, is air flowing through the pig pen and you know it, it's it's these elements that he that he starts with that and and good good water you know, are you using hard water, soft water? What kind of things are you using to mix your ingredients? What's up, Grow Pro? Thank you. Good to see you guys this morning. Um, but yeah, so he he starts with the elements, you know, air, the three elements of air and the energy coming down and all these things. So if you watch uh, Master Cho's natural farming videos that are available on my channel, um, you can see how he starts these things and it's the similar to the I Ching, you know, if you got the basics and then you reach towards the light and you do that, um, really focusing on the frequency and care and then, you know, learning Korean natural farming, getting into the solutions, understanding again, how those elements affect your fermentations, all of these things. That's, it's just these repeating cycles again and again of, um, these natural forces coming into fruition for us. Um, so I, let's see here. I'm getting this chat together. Let's see if I can shrink that down. What's up from Indiana? Good, good to see you guys here with the, the Canna family gathering. It's kind of nice. I, sorry, sorry. Last week I missed um, my live. I just, um, after teaching all that prior week and then everything, I just, um, kind of spaced it out of, <laughs> Uh, man, it's, it's tiring teaching a whole week of KNF, but, um, yeah. So anyway, um, 
what I wanted to do here today with the um with the office hour and question is I got a really since since there's no questions in the chat right now, I got a really interesting um email. And in fact I get I get emails like this a lot, um, where what I'm what I'm reading is, you know, let me, let me actually, let me just dive into this question. Let me just switch this, um, this mode here so you can see what I'm looking at. And, um, uh, is my video in there? Hang on one sec and let me get this thing set up. Well, okay. Well, I'm not going to have a video over it or, or no, here, I got to just turn it on. Okay. Okay. There, let me transition over to this. So now you can see what I'm looking at here. And so, um, I got this question here, um, from a guy in Mexico, German, German, and he's, um, you know, this, this is like a classic story of like, I've, I've been doing things conventionally, I've burned out my land and I want to bring it back to life and I want to restore the environment. And where do I start? What do I do? You know, I've learned some things on the internet and how do I get into it? So TLDR, you know, um, that's basically, I'm going to go through this email and answer those questions and see if by going through this scenario, which is a direct scenario of, of, you know, okay, here, I got these solutions. How do I apply them? Um, let, let's get into it. So, um, there's a 28, 120 acres of land with mild weather, half forest, half meadow. My purpose is to convert as much as I can to KNF. The plan has been exploited or this place has been exploited with bad agricultural practices through many years. Mainly the meadowlands were used to produce grains such as corn, oats, and lots of tilling and chemicals have deteriorated the soil, turning it into wasteland. Only the rocks and sand remain. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so like ex exploitive agriculture, basically, you know, like we, we think we're doing agriculture, we're producing food, but really we're kind of juicing the land, we're burning out this food, we're um, mining the nutrients in, for in the form of food, you know, talk about California, the Central Plain, they think of amending it with chemicals and such, but they're really like burning out the organic matter, burning out the carbon, building a, burning out the humus, right? This is what's happening all over the world, okay? And he says, no organic matter is left, no organic matter, no life in the soil, okay? Right, because you've burned it out with chemicals, you've got this great production, but however you, um, like now the soil is totaled, right? This is the, the, you know, the, the result of the green revolution. Like if you practice chemical agriculture on land for about 30 years, you can see these, uh, things where production was going way up as they added chemicals to this living soil. But after 30 years of use of those technologies brought out in the green revolution, all of a sudden there's the, the fertilizer costs become exponential going up and the production just falls off. And so it costs more money to put the same output. And this is like the story everywhere, right? So because you burned off your organic matter using these um, petrochemical salt-based fertilizers. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, shout out to the, the people growing the sacred medicine, man. Um, so, okay. So there are also some animals in the ranch, sheep, chickens, ducks, and horses, which in my opinion are in bad condition also. Okay. So if you have sick soil, you have sick plants you have sick animals which leads to sick humans like master cho talks about this this is where do you got to start well you know you got to start you can eat healthier food but you got to actually grow healthier soil and grow healthier food in healthier soil which then leads to healthier plants which then leads to healthier animals which then you know unhealthier microbes which then leads to healthier humans so in essence when he's looking at this also i'm betting that the condition of the people living there is bad as well yeah. Okay. Story of, you know, 2020, 2021. Let's move on to 2022 into the year of the tiger starting up 
getting rid of the year of the ox. Oh, that was a heavy burden to carry, I tell you. Um, whew, but let's prance uh, here. So all I have, I have all the hope in my heart to bring it back to life and make it sustain itself with pure KNF. Dynamite. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Okay. So if you got hope and you got that, then the second thing you're going to need is some education. Um, so um, I have some ideas to produce high value crops and products. Okay. So blackberries. We have a wild variety in the forest, which produces really tasty berries, much better taste than any commercial ones I've tasted. We have already started to propagate via cuttings and with uh, 0.75 acres, 3,000 3, plants, and scale it up gradually. The plant has begun propagating naturally for many years and has adapted to climate, height, soil, etc. Okay, so A, I want to, before I get, I get into all these, these three points he has here, I want to point out the fact that, yeah, one thing you're thinking here is I have some ideas to produce high value crops and products. And I believe every farm, oh, hit that there. Every farm has to have a bottom line. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, I want to rejuvenate this 120 acres and I want to turn it into a, a pure KNF, um, you know, functioning farm. You got to think about your bottom line, which is what is, what is your cash crop? And how are you going to take the, the items you're producing out of your farm, which is like kind of like printing your own money. And what are you going to grow to strategically get that to the market in your area or where you can turn that into things you need? So I think thinking there, thinking with a budget, thinking with a spreadsheet, putting this into numbers, calculating out how many, um, gallons you need of the solutions to farm successfully on a frequency that meets your cost analysis and how are you a, what crops are you going to put in to meet your market um and and make money on that for for me here in hawaii i, th I think the answer is kava <clears throat> excuse me oh and and I give that that out kind of freely. Like I think if more we need more Hawaiian kava produced everywhere. And I don't think you could flood the market too hard or or you know having locally produced Korean natural farming grown um, ava or any crop basically um, you know is is what people want to want to have. You know even maybe growing some coffee and sending it to to Tyler in Oklahoma. Um, and if you're there. Uh, check out his coffee shop. Um, it's a great place in Oklahoma City. Check in with Tyler. Um, but so having the bottom line, getting that together, I think with blackberries, what he's mentioning here, you know, one thing you got to check your market. Uh, you got to one thing, you know, sometimes the wild blackberries don't uh, pack as well and store as well. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to um, get that to your customer but however blackberries if you have access to a freezer is something that could be easily fresh frozen thrown into a freezer bag and shipped worldwide and people you know all over the world are buying you know they'd love to buy fresh frozen um korean natural farming blackberries i'd imagine so opening it up to like a, a global market of freezing or making these berries available you know if you know if they're perishable getting them to your customer in a way that, that would make it work um if they're sweet and they grow great and they're already adapted for climate it's just like you know using what's already indigenous tenkung like what most people would consider like himalayan blackberry a weed but taking that and saying okay well i'm gonna actually harvest these berries and fresh freeze them and make a market and or even turn them into a plant juice so having vines like this I think you can even set up a permaculture system, which the next thing he mentions here is apple cider. So he has an apple orchard that's uh, two and a half acres and he has considerable yield, but the market doesn't like to eat that kind of apple um, just because it's not as pretty as the other varieties, yet it is great in flavor and healthier. 
So my idea is to produce apple cider and some apple, apple um, vinegar as well. Um, we'll still have to acquire the machinery to process the great amount of fruits. Um, so yeah, um, sometimes, yeah, two and a half acres of, of going maybe, um, yes, uh, similar, but you, it sounds like between these two things, if you can find the market, you now have these two things where you can start to create these ferments. And from there, you have enough fertilizer to, to remediate the rest of your 120 acres. And if you thought of it to, um, increase these cash crops, feed these plant juices to each other, um, synergistically spray each other with the ferments and the, the vinegars and the fruit juices, um, and, you know, can of foods and all those things you can, you can do that. Um, and if you're wondering what those are and you want to, um, since, since I'm here, um, all these recipes that I'm talking about, I have in, in, a, in my ebook here, you can find the videos online. Um, and, but in my ebook that you can download, um, from the KNF support website, um, there's all these recipes of like, so you got crop waste. What do you do? Well, if you want to remediate 120 acres, you got to take these things and start to ferment them in. And so one of the things is to take a, you know, take your plant material, your fruit material, brown sugar, um, and a mixing bucket, mix those together, pack them into some sort of fermentation vessel. Maybe if in your case, this might be like a, um, like a 35 gallon trash can, 55 gallon drum that you could kind of fill up and then somehow, uh, get it so you can pour off the juice and take the rest of your leftover apples and, and sugar, and then turn that into a vinegar, which is the can of cleanser. Now, now you've gotten both these products out of your apples. You've gotten this, you know, amazing food here from, from your apples. And then the, the leftover waste becomes the vinegar. And so now that's something you can spray and put out there and you've now got those resources, right? Immediately. Um, he also, so he's saying on the farm, he also has eggs. And the chicken coop has many issues. It has a concrete floor and bad, oh, and bad protection from wild animals. <laughs> They've been attacked multiple times, and there's only ch two chickens, one rooster. They're only fed with cracked corn. Of course, no production. There's an open area next to it where we can establish a new home for 250 chickens with a soil floor and well protected. I already have the designing of most of the materials. Can we use the old chicken coop? to store supplies and food. And so <clears throat> taking, taking this, um, <clears throat> your other production and then turning that by via fermentation and silage into your chickens food from this, and maybe even using part of these chickens as a pastured system in a chicken wagon to start to restore these areas. You know, if you're having trouble with predators, um, I recommend trapping on the perimeters out into, um, you know, preventatively keep the predators from coming in, um, trying to protect them. In my case, I, I can't from the mongoose, um, there, I really have to have like almost a human safe house. If I try to do them out in the field, they chirp and the mongoose come in and kill. So I have to trap really aggressively at a, at a big perimeter to keep the mongoose away. Um, but. Once you have the chickens, if they're doing, um, you know, tilling for you in a chicken wagon type of thing, the key with the chicken wagon is if, if I'm going to move the chicken wagon is right where I'm going to put it, spread IMO four and put them the soil foundation solution, then drag your chicken wagon two days later, three days later over that space. Or, or if you're doing it daily, just keep spreading the IMO and, and the IMO four and the, the maintenance solution or the soil solution out in front of this area, you're going to move this chicken pen behind because what that does is it helps that soil to the microbes come alive, which then invites worms. And if you're in rocky, sandy soil, there may not be worms there right now, but those worms will return as those microbes create food. Then the chickens are there eating those worms, pooping, creating more uh, a rich system. So if you are dragging a chicken wagon around, put the 
you know, spray that area in front where you're going to bring the, um, the chicken wagon next. Um, so, and, and yeah, also ferment the chicken's feed or yeah. And, and put in IMO4 into there. Um, and then he says, these are my three main ideas, yet the possibilities are still endless. And so one thing I want to say is that if you're trying to do 120 acres, you're going to need to probably do um, this recipe here, which is the the um, disgustingly cheap microbes. And just taking um, five gallons of water, a half cup of rich soil, um, half cup of boiled potato, and five tablespoons of salt, you can make 50 gallons of solution to spread all of these microbes which propagate over um as as the time goes at 12 hours more microbes are growing as at 24 hours a bunch 36 hours a whole bunch and then they collapse down and then it turns into more of a fertilizer so if you take this recipe and just very quickly put the starch the microbes and the salt and the water together and then dilute further into um into water you can make 50 gallons really easily and this is something you can drench on that land that that's out there um it, it you know if you have a whole um, meadow area that needs a whole bunch of treatment it's like this this is the recipe you want to use and, and get in there e even treating a lawn a yard um if you do this recipe you know three four times and really really drench that area the microbes will start to come back and start to build that sand and silt. And as you plant other things, organic matter will accumulate. And, you know, throwing some biochar, of course, is is going to hugely help help you out there. Um, so uh, from the beginning, uh, his goal is to produce 100% organic. Then he discovered KNF and he instantly fell in love with the methodology and practices. And he's sure this is the right way to do it. I'm pretty sure too. Um, you know, it's just an alignment with nature. It's KNF is just um, refinement of what's naturally happening and emulating and bringing that to life. Um, he's mainly seen my videos and some other guys on the internet, and he's already made some KNF inputs such as, and then he lists all these acronyms. And so if you do get the book and you guys then all guys that are veterans here know um, what it is that there's basically nine solutions and and there are there are more than this in natural farming but these are the nine vital solutions that are give you all the tools you need to build all the soil foundation bring this whole property back to life um restore his whole biome make it so it's in three years from now um german Ger german was his german yeah is going to to have just the most immaculate farm that he's going to say, wow, this is rich. His soil is going to be rich. His plants are going to be rich. His animals are going to be rich. And he's, the humans will be rich. And these are the nine tools to help you get there. And um, so he lists a bunch of these in his email here. And he says, hey, I've had, but he says all the acronyms, right? Which makes it hard to understand how to apply this stuff. Because now, now you got all these acronyms. Well, what do I do with it? Well, take those acronyms here and put it to these words here and be like microbes, protectors, food, cleanser, medicine, structure, fuel, reproduction, minerals. And now all those words like, okay, something's sick. My my animals, he's saying, you know, that horses don't look so good. Maybe they need a bit of medicine. You know, maybe they need some some food in their uh, food or, or some food in their food or some fuel, you know, and all light dilutions don't, you know, consult your vet or whatever, you know, don't, um don't kill your animals, but we, ha we have recommendations for livestock as well as plants and, um, take these solutions and, you know, here, here he's saying he's, he's made some of these. So let's, let's jump back to see what, what he has here. And he's saying he's made these things from, from LAB, FPJ vinegar from the apples and the other fruits rem remaining of my FPJ, FFJ, uh, F A O H N. I used cinnamon, garlic, ginger, and couldn't get the ingredients, so I added some antipathogenic and medicinal plants. Not sure if that's wrong to do. No, it's it's not. Use what's indigenous to you. Follow the practices. Understand why you're using certain things, but that's good. Um, sea salt. No access to the oceans. 
and you can make fulvic acid from the worm bin. Perfect. Really good ideas. I have a lot of eggshells. Yes, awesome. Bones and coconut shells to make calcium. Coconut shells. I don't know if you can make calcium from coconut shells, but bones you can. Um... Or, or calcium, well, the eggshells are, are what actually makes calcium. Oh, oh. Oh, and biochar. Okay, okay. Never mind, I, I, I didn't read the full sentence. He's making, yeah. Anyway, he's making reproduction bones and coconut shells. Okay. And then I, he has some other sunflowers to make um, water-soluble phosphorus. And he's made IMO 1 through 4. Awesome, man, you sound super experienced. What? You just need the application. So that's what I guess today's video is about. I don't know if, if uh, you know, shout out if you've made any of these solutions and really have gone through it this much faith into it, but maybe it's the names of understanding how these things are applied. And hopefully today's episode helps you get into that. Um, so, okay. So, and he was thinking, uh, okay. And he has 800 pounds of IMO4 currently. So if you have 800 pounds, that's, um, it's 1300 pounds per acre. So if you're thinking of, you want to treat your, um, blueberry area, which I think you said was, uh, 0.75 acres, that would be probably about perfect to put that down under the rows. So let's, so I think he's going to get into some, some ways. Okay. So, so let's, he's going to get into how to, to, uh, prepare the soil. So this this next question um, is one of my questions about blackberries is how to prepare the soil. I want to convert the meadowlands into a blackberry orchard. In particular, the particularly area of the land that has to recover from the bad practices. Maybe eight years. There are currently perennial grasses and annual weeds. I don't really want to till and cause more damage. I was thinking of laying, layering cardboard, corn straw, and pine needles to suppress weeds and grasses and plant my berries after that. Okay, so all that all that sounds okay. And, it, and then he asks, when is it a good time to add the IMO4? So if you're going to take the IMO4 here and he wants to convert meadowlands into a blackberry orchard, so, and there's currently perennial grasses and annual weeds, and he doesn't want to till to cause more damage. So before you layer the cardboard, put down your IMO4. So your IMO4 is directly in contact with the soil, or, or your rocks and sand, if that's all you have, and right against the ground layer. It, or in this case, I guess it would be on top of the the grasses and weeds. It just in and, and put that down. And if you can, so put the IMO and then put the cardboard on top of that. So it's in that layer. If that grass and weeds decomposes with the IMO, there it'd be great. And but do the soil foundation right then, like water that stuff in. Don't just put it and then smother it with the cardboard because the cardboard will prevent the liquids from penetrating down to feed the IMOs to kickstart them to give them the food and liquid and and um, soil solution they need so scatter the IMO put the um, water water on your um, soil solution to feed your microbes those liquids and then put the cardboard down then cover it with your you know your corn straw and pine needles if, if you're wanting to but putting that thick layer of cardboard down enough to really suppress the area would 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 work especially where you're going to put your your berries um and then he's saying should i add imo5 instead of imo4 to enrich the nutrients in the soil um the answer is is no not imo4 in 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 master cho's terminology imo4 is what we call um adapted imo so it's adapted to your soil it's ready to go into your soil imo5 is fermented mixed compost and when you have a baby and you're trying to get the soil uh, fermented mixed compost is like this buffet of things it's like eating a hamburger when you're a baby and so IMO it, IMO4 is is not as enriched it's more of just the soil microbes themselves that go in 
So you don't want to put IMO5 as something to build soil foundation. When you want to use IMO5 or fermented mixed compost is after your blueberries are starting to sprout, after the soils come alive, after those or blackberries are starting to grow, and, and then that's when you want to amend when they're starting to go into a, a growth stage. That, that's when you can put an IMO5. And an IMO5 is actually really effective right when your plant, right as it goes through, right before its puberty and transition phase, as it goes through, supplementing with something that's enriched, like a fermented mixed compost at that time versus trying to amend in the beginning with a, um, with a compost. So if they... Hopefully that makes sense. So don't use, use IMO4 when you're building soil foundation, not IMO5. And does IMO5 inoculate good microbes in the soil as IMO4? So I kind of just answered that question there. Is it better to make liquid IMO for large scale? And I would absolutely say yes. I, I recommended to make those cheap uh, microbes uh, in the book here. Um, you know... It, these these cheap microbes on this page are the way this is a liquid IMO. This is absolutely, if you're going to do 120 acres, um, you got to be doing liquids and, and you know, putting this l water and life and, you know, letting the air get in there and into your soil, all these things, bring that balance in. Um, so liquid IMO and, and even taking your your IMO and adding it to um, this the for, this formula right here, which is the same formula for making your IMO three, is is maintenance solution plus lab plus C, or actually let me let me go to this this is a better way of showing it here, is adding this soil formula, and and some IMOs and bubbling this in a T, so adding these across this. Um, and, and bubbling that make a liquid IMO. Um, and when is the best time for a tra transplanting the berries, raining season before or after? I would say, I mean, if I was to plant them, I would want to plant them right when it's gonna, right before it starts raining. Um, that way, also, you know, you can build your soil foundation in that time. You can really get into a, the field and plant them, keep the moisture there put biochar down in the rows where you want it to retain moisture around your plants, you know, really think about that. Um, and I wanted to have great soil before planting my berries. So I have a couple months to prepare while my berries are rooting and sprouting. Okay. So yeah, definitely get your soil foundation at, in ahead of time. One thing that could happen to you is weeds will start to grow in your area that, um, you're, you're preparing so early ahead. Um, so try to plant some sort of beneficial ground cover as well and, you know, irrigate it r regularly so that you can um, keep those microbes alive and, and continue to feed the soil solution on a regular interval while you're trying to build this soil. The longer you can put those, you know, you put the microbes out and then you feed them on a, on a regular basis while you're building your soil foundation with that cardboard, with the, the mulch on top, with those microbes in contact with your soil and getting moist, that's what's going to bring your, um, your, your soil to life, you know? Um, so, and then he's saying, um... Yeah, I, if I have success with these three ideas, we will keep the ranch going for many years to come and convert 120 acres into a KNF paradise. So if you're in Mexico and you want to reach out to German, maybe maybe reach out to him, see um, if you can help work together and make make this happen. That would be amazing. You know, I hope the whole earth eventually is a is a, a Korean natural farming paradise. Um, just the the microbes the master chose knowledge this these putting these things into practice understanding what they do hopefully you've seen, you've learned here of how to take these concepts put them into practice um you know what what to do from his example here um you know i've been doing something similar here in hawaii permaculture korean natural farming combined um so he's saying, I'm still learning. I couldn't be more excited about this. I see this as a life's project and put all my effort into it. That's why I've reached out to you, asking you respectfully to help me and be my mentor and to convert hundreds of acres into natural farming the way it should be, benefiting the whole planet. And 
Oh, thank you. And here's some pictures of his ranch here. You know, this, this area right here, he has some animals grazing. If you start to paddock these animals out and put them into intensive grazing versus letting them roam out here, um, you can really start to improve, concentrate their manure, put the IMOs. They'll really mow down an area, then move them to the next sector, move them to the next sector, and spray before you're moving these guys. If you, if you have that ability, or just start to put a little electric fence around them, um, that that's a big beginning to restoring this using these animals to rebuild this land in tandem with putting that cheap microbe solution out here make a huge barrel of that dump it over you know put 20 trash cans out here fill them all up have them ferment then fill them with water dump them over start restoring this whole piece of land you know that's if you're serious about it and you have the money and you have the funds and you want to do it and you want to start to advance your blueberries into this area, you know, that's, and you want to maintain or make your livestock grass better, the, the pasture is better. This is the way to do it. Um, and some people are talking about using radishes. Oh, look, here's his IMO collection. I'd say that's a, looks like a really good job to me. Um, yeah, I would, I would a plus that one. Oh, look at those luscious berries. Imagine if these were frozen, sent to you, and you received these, and you could make the most delicious smoothie. Mm. Oh, hungry just thinking about it. Is this, this is like a chicken pen? No, some sort of maybe pig pen. I don't know. Looks like a nice place. I, I would love, if I didn't live in Hawaii, I'd probably live down here in Mexico, hang out, eat tacos all day. Ooh, look, mycelium in his um, IMOs. So, um, yeah, this looks, this looks okay. That looks good. Good soil microbes. Um, pines, pines will probably be compatible with your blueberries. I wouldn't mulch pines on many other things, but I think they might be compatible. I'd try it in a small area, do two tests and see which works better. Mulching pine around a tree like that. I'd scoot it a little bit away. And then right here, I would put all, put your IMO four, sprinkle it all in here. Um, do about a, um, uh, hat, not a maybe half a five gallon bucket, maybe a, maybe a third of a five gallon bucket around a tree of IMO four sprinkled under here. Then put the mulch, then water it intensely with your soils prep solution, and this whole area will come to life. And it's even better to do it right here to put your mulch instead of mulching right here. I know you might mulch right there for weed control or something, but actually where the tree wants to eat is actually under its drip line out here. So instead of right here mulching. It's better, I mean, this might be better for you or, you know, not to mow so close or whatever, but the tree actually wants to eat right in this sector, right on the outside here. You see where the grass kind of changes? Like, even though you're mowing here, you see the grass changes from here to there. Like, this is bacteria, and then the tree's roots and things are here in this zone, out here, coming around. And this is where it wants the mulch is actually right in this zone, right here. If I put the mulch and I start putting IMO4 there and I mul and I water that stuff in, really drench it, that's right where the root tips are. Um, so if you're mulching in here, it's probably for like maintenance reasons, but it's best to mulch out here, okay? So on orchards and all those things. Oh, okay, okay. That, that was quite a marathon with... Um, German there to go and go through all that. But I hope, I hope that was helpful here as an office hour to see his question there and to know. Um, but I want to jump back over here to our live chat and just scroll back up. I want to thank um, Tyler and uh, GrowPro for kicking down some uh, stickers and super chats and sponsoring the show um also the pure knf foundation for making this um a, a sustainable thing for me and i appreciate all your support out there for tuning into the channel if anything's helped you today um you know buying the book or you know getting out and doing natural farming sharing it with your friends teaching them holding a local workshop getting people's hands covered in sugar and plant material and exudates and juices and ferments um, helping the world become a better place is what you can do to help us all, all, yeah. So money helps, but also doing it helps. And 
it's not all about money. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in from around the world. Let's see. You guys are growing sacred medicine. Yo, that's probably one of the best um, cash crops to integrate in. And if you can take a medicinal herb operation and put other plants in between and use the natural farming and spray, you probably, they say, um, you know, marijuana is the gateway drug, but I believe it is the gateway drug to farming and getting young people an agriculturally sound um, future in agriculture because you can plant a crop that you can, when you put these solutions on there, the plant secondary metabolites that form in the plant are amazing. Um, and if you guys haven't checked it out, um, I just watched um, Steve Dredd's aquaponics, second aquaponics conference with Dragonfly Earth Medicine and wanted to shout out to Dem, Dem Pure in the house uh, <laughs> and those guys doing the good work because they were talking all about Korean natural farming, how this works in their operation, what they're doing. Um, and if you're not tuned into them and what they're doing there, really cool stuff. Um, but this stuff works. And they were talking about all these plant secondary metabolites, tuning in your biome to, to uh, the right resonance and frequencies. And, you know, I felt like it was just like my homies talking to me and really wish I would got a chance to meet those guys when they came to the Big Island. Uh, but maybe they'll come again soon. And, um, you know, anyway, check out um, that. I might put a link in the description. Description below. <laughs> um okay yeah someone's recommending teaming with microbes totally it's the theory of korean natural farming okay and then someone's saying do you foliar spray all the way through flower girl pro is saying it i found some strains evolve and some strains don't really change or get better um foliar all the way through man and, and use the KNF solution. So if you're looking for, you know, what solutions to use, the, which formulas to use, um, I have a handy dandy app um, on the phone here. And, you know, it has the solutions of what, what to use. You put in the amounts, get it get it to go. Or it's also in the book and you can make your, your own thing there of what, what to use when. Um, these solutions here, you know showing you what you need when maintenance formula these things and then taking a growth cycle and this chart even though it's kind of sideways let's see if i can rotate it like that so when you look at this growth chart here and let's see scale it up and you take your end of your harvest here your 60 90 days put it over here and then divide it in half and say this is 30 days, 45 days, somewhere in there. This is when you'd flip your, from going from um, vegetative into flowering. Um, then you're going in, or actually you're in your flowering is starting to happen here. So just before you're entering in, as you're transitioning over, then you're finishing off your plant and you can foliar spray all the way through using all these different formulas, fruit, leaf, fruit, harvest, soil, Get all these things together and understanding the nutrient flow for what you're doing and there's a lot more intricate things than that so also recommend you get trained by someone who's a professional at this in person that has lineage to master cho and um knows what they're doing the taste the smell the feel and make the imo correctly because I really have to be there, smell it, see it to know if it's correct or not. Pictures can sometimes be de deceiving. I just saw a picture on the Facebook where this guy did it in a pl uh, collected IMO in a plastic Tupperware, and that is not how. So, um, okay. So here, here's the mixes. You can add other things, of course. You guys got it in the chat. Um, Yeah, and you guys got the, you know, some things happening here in the chat. I'm glad you guys talk to each other while you're here. It's kind of get a good KNF family going. Let's see. How do I focus in on this one? Uh, wait here. Oh, 
Okay, so uh, hey, Justin, what's up, Justin Chappelle, <laughs> Chapel, uh, Justin Chapel, <laughs> Chappelle show. Hey, uh, my friend in Bend, Oregon, um, you're asking um, would Juniper would would be suitable for deep litter system um, that could be used for pigs? Um, I you know Juniper is really fragrant and has a lot of that resin and sap in it. I'd be I'd be careful using. It. I think I think you could. Um, it would last a long time as a bottom layer in a no smell pig pen. You basically layer two feet of logs at the bottom, and then there's about two feet of, of wood chips above. And I wouldn't make the wood chips out of the juniper by shredding it. I'd make it out of something different. But if you're two feet of logs, as, as long as you can get them, juniper tends to be kind of gnarled like that. But as long, long, big segments you can put down in the bottom and even char some of that and put it in there too. That'll really build a good foundation and then put your two feet of, of um, you know, something, some other type of green waste. Um, maybe, you know, I, there's hemp herd where you're at. Um, they grow com commercial um, hemp herd and all kinds of, you know, st um, stuff you can get in, in, in Ben to, to put, make that upper layer. But um, I would use, yeah, that. Okay. Um... Uh, would we be correct to state that the microbes mine sand, silt, and clay for minerals? Um, yeah, yes, eyewitness. Hey, how's it? Uh, glad glad you're coming out for the class. Um, it's going to be fun in February. Looking forward to that. It's almost two weeks away, man. Hope you're ready. Um, so sand, silt, clay and for minerals yes this is why when you when i'm saying how to regenerate the soil like if you got silty sandy clay if you're putting the imo4 and then you're watering them with these soil solutions you're you're feeding the microbes to start to give them the nutrients like the snack packs they need to go into the wilderness to crack the sand silt and soil into airspace and into things that have minerals the other component of that is usually a plant is reaching down and putting out exudates and powering this system. So that's where you as a Korean natural farmer have to come in and spray like the soil solution or the, you know, when you're spraying the leaf solution up on your plant and that's coming down or you're, you're spraying something else to mimic those exudates for the first little bit of time. And I say spraying, I mean drenching, somehow getting these foods into those microbes that are on your soil. And if you can get that water with those nutrients into the top inch, quarter inch of area, those those microbes that you put down are going to start mining into that sand, silt, and clay. And that's the whole idea is get, them, get the IMO4, the, the ones that are tuned to, to transform your soil, and then start feeding them. And they start to get that soil to, to life. And then as that layer starts to build and build and build after a couple of years, you'll have substantial soil. And as those roots now reach down and plug into that mycelial matrix, they start to, um, you know, build organic matter and build your soil and build everything up. And then they plug into the microbes and feed them and they become what you were doing as a, as someone to kickstart the system by putting these KNF solutions out, by following this um, formula to, to bring out and spray and put the nutrients to the land. Then the root system takes over and does what you were doing. It starts to have the plants fall and ferment. It starts to make vinegar. It starts to have these exudates and all these natural compounds that, that nature produces to defend itself. And, and as that system becomes healthier and healthier, and as you spray it to help it along and, and really concentrate on growing the mycelia and, and feeding the, my, the microbes what it wants, more than just compost tea of putting microbes out there, but of, of, um, of feeding these exudates and, and enzymes and things that the, the plants want to eat, that's or, or the, the, your, your, your microbes want to eat. I mean, the whole system wants to eat this food, get it in there. And, and that's, that's what brings it to life there. So that's how they get the sand, silt and, and clay to, to transform and unlock and, and turn into this living system. Um, <laughs> so Tyler says he's taking up his parents goat or his, his nephew to see his parents goats. I want to finish the video. Okay. So, um, let's see my offer. Okay, um, so Heather is saying a mild groundbreaking may be best to get started. And um, 
I, I just want to testify to that of like really, you know, do your soil work in the beginning. And if you do have to break ground, use a machine, shape beds, get things where you want them to be, you know, um, I, I can't even believe I'm saying this in 2022, but maybe even using some plastic to keep things down and, and strategically placed, you know, I'm not advocating for like covering the world in plastic and heating up our soils, but making these systems, you know, with cardboard, all these things that we can put into place to really mildly groundbreak. I totally agree with that. Like do it. And as soon as you do it, then come back with soil, soil foundation. Like right now, I just, in my front yard, I just, I just made two really nice uh raised beds and and i destroyed the soil to do it area that i've been cultivating for a couple of years even grew some nice ground covers everything and i destroyed it to shape these beds but the soil life's still there especially as i come in with imo4 and then i'm going to put a light layer of mulch over the area i'm going to grow on and then i'm actually going to tarp the in the the pathways between and um really focus on uh, putting the soil solution down to bring this area back to life and to put these micros back in. So always, you know, breaking the land a little bit to, to just destroy the other plants that are there, sowing your things, you know, um, but then once you do build the microbes from there and try to go, you know, break it once and then no till from then on out, if, if possible, you know, and try not to neglect things and have them cycle and build for you and build themselves up. So um yeah so heather's she she just said to bite the bullet and deep chisel plow to break the hard pan in biology and put the plowed cracks then cover it with weed mats of some type a few weeks a year later um heather i also recommend if you are gonna like chisel plow like that get a bunch of seawater um, or, you know, make it from sea salt and mix in some calcium into that and, and try to get that real, real deep into there. Those, those minerals will really help that once you, you break it, you can actually chemically help it flocculate and separate. And depending on how your soil and what your soil conditions are, seawater really helps to build that soil texture, as well as getting some KNF protectors, the lacto lactic acid bacteria to go deep. And after you're doing soil work like that, of course, you know, finish up Korean natural farming, come in with the microbes, give that love back. Um, but yeah, do do what you need to do. And, and really, you know, because like I said, like I started this thing out by saying, you know, it's about the the um, the bottom line when when he's putting in the blackberries, he's putting in these things. You need a certain level of production to come out of your farm. If you don't have that, what do you, you know, it's Korean natural farming, but, you know just growing great soil is great for the next generation, but they're also going to need productive crops and, you know, um, parents that are economically stable and can provide a good future and, you know, all, all these things that, that, that really matter. So doing what needs to be done is always, it's rule zero, you know, do it when you can do it what needs to be done. And, um, so, Heather's also saying that pigs make hella good soil in a short period of time and they push the row up along the wire and that is nice stuff. So it sounds like she's using pigs to do animal tilling. That's pretty epic. I would I would love that. Um Yes. Okay, hey, so uh Benjamin he's saying he would love to come out and take his classes but he's on the very east coast are there any KNF instructors you would recommend on the east coast I'd love to come out to you but travel in Hawaii is a, a cost um I'd, I'd recommend yeah there's there's a couple there's a couple good natural farmers out there um I, I'd check out Mike Hobbs and um he's I, he's in Pennsylvania I think and then um also my friend Aaron Englander is out there um, I think he's up in Maine and then, um, there's, yeah, it's actually a, a lot of people on the East coast. I should get a list and kind of, um, put a directory up. That's, that's what kind of what we're going to do with the foundation this year is get those directories out. And, um, cause there, there's all kinds of people that have been certified and trained and can train, but we need to develop that list so that you can find them a little bit easier. So I'm going to put in some of that infrastructure, 
but if you are on the East Coast and you feel qualified and want to shout out, um, you know, and, and also um, a lot of people have been asking me about uh, remote certification and um, been working on that in terms of we have a really great learning series and book that are working in tandem together. And then from that, um, I want to make it available to um, utilize myself and other people that I've trained to uh, evaluate your solutions and, you know, certify that you're you're making them correctly and um, build this network of people that really feel confident in, you know, building the nine solutions competently, um, producing them, getting them out to farmers, tasting them, testing them, supporting each other, you know, taking information like I made today and making it common knowledge so that we're all re restoring the earth and we're coming into balance with, with everything we're doing. Um, is there anyone in the UK to connect with? Um, I don't, not, not that I know of right now in the UK. Um, but if anyone, you know, if you want to come can a farm, come train. Um, yeah, we got, um, eyewitnesses coming out. He's, he wants to go do some training, um, go around and teach missionaries. So there's definitely work to be done. If you come here and you train and then you want to be this like mobile trainer, look at, you know, there's, there's needs in the UK, there's needs on the East coast, there's needs everywhere. So if you want to make that something you do, um, you know, hit me up, come in. Um, there's, there's a couple camping spots open for February, um, sold out of cottages right now. Um, and I don't really have any other training scheduled right now, but if you want to jump in to, to go around the world and be this person, let me know, I'm, you know, flexible can work on things, see what works. Just trained some folks up in Alaska and, um, and, you know, last week, if you tuned in or two weeks ago, if you tuned into the office hours, you got to see them kind of be interviewed and what they got out of the training and how it worked for them. And, um, so let's see here. Uh, sent a poop sample to be tested. LAB was my only issue. Two, two different kinds. I think. I think the my kids get me the PDF book for Christmas. Won't see them until the seventeenth. I will get it fixed. I'm not sure what you're saying, Mackie B. There, but um, LAB is his only issue. You know, um, LAB should clean up most pathogenic bacteria and all that. So it should actually be a cleaning agent. Um, so Jeff James is asking, is it possible to cure a soil affected by bacteria wilt using IMO4 soil foundation? Um, so Jeff, I want to just say what, what the function of IMO4 is, is to bring your soil back into balance. The more you can feed it, the more you can put good microbes in there you don't get like things like bacterial wilt taken off. The reason there is some bacterial wilt going is something's gotten out of balance in your soil microbe. Something's feeding that. Something's making that a possible. And so correcting that, putting the IMO4 brings your soil back into balance, feeding it the soil solution um, once, twice a week or before, or one or two weeks before you plant, get it, like feeding that soil, bringing it to life, putting these liquids in to penetrate the top quarter inch, bring them microbes in. Those microbes penetrate in and that bacterial wilt, wherever it is, you know, especially if you use lactic acid bacteria, it can just, you know, take that and arrest the um, fermentation <laughs> of that other microbe that's thriving there. So um, I, I can't promise it'll get rid of your bacterial wilt, but what it will do is bring it back into balance so that the bacterial wilt is not causing trouble for you. We had a similar thing here. We had a fusarium, which is a fungal kind of thing that gets into a ginger. And even though the fusarium was present, the roots weren't um, suffering from it. So there, it's possible to have it be in balance, if that makes sense. It's not, a, it's not an elimination type of thing. Will it get rid of it? But it's more like, will it come into balance? So... Um, want to thank you guys if um you know if you've made it this far we got uh we got the pure knf um foundation thanks thanks those guys for sponsoring this um that's at purecanf.org and then you can find all of these um and more at knfsupport.com
all of these office hours. They're here. Um, you can actually ask questions here on this as well. Um, try to get back to folks here as much as I can. You want to download the book, it's right here. Um, ask a question. And the office hours are on this link here where you can see, you know, right now it's happening live. If you click this, it'd be playing here and all of our past office hours. Um, and as they go on, um, the Peer KNF Foundation's also been helping and as well as Julia uh, up in Finland has been helping to um, put our table of contents in. So after about a week or so, um, all the episodes come out with a table of contents so you can find out what's in each episode. You know, like we want to find out about bionutrient meter, um, you know, how much LAB should you consume daily, uh, the continuation, what, 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 I'm not sure what that is, but uh, pig pen floor design, all these things, passive heat in the winter, you know, all these questions you may have, may have already been answered on the KNF office hours, which are available here. So share, smash the like, subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. Isn't that what you're supposed to say at the end of a video? I'm not sure. It seems like that's what everyone does, but just want to thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for the support contributions. All those great things. I want to wish you a um, happy Chinese New Year. Looking forward to the tiger prancing around, getting the ox, getting the weight off our shoulders, getting back to the basics of farming, traveling, maybe spreading more KNF. Let's see this thing go viral. <laughs> or not viral. Let's see this thing go anti viral. <laughs> oh, it's up to me. It's up to you. Okay. Well, thanks. Long live the natural farmer. Aloha.